Hello, students. So today we are going to learn about the challenges in airport operations. But before we move into our slides, as usual, just to set the perspective, I'll just try to give you a little bit of the gist of the entire chapter. Now, after chapter seven, we are going to go through even chapter eight. Um, chapter eight basically deals with um, you know, the future of aviation or the future of the airports and the airlines sector. So, well, what do you think are the challenges in airport operations? Just without even we going uh, through the details or even without we going through the slides. Just I want you to think about this. Just imagine the situation. Just think about this. Um, that what could be the challenges in airport operations? Now, we all know that challenges are part of life. It is inevitable. So likewise, even the airports face certain challenges because, you know, everything is uncertain in the world. So obviously, you know, in the airports are faced with certain challenges, certain uncertainties. Normally, of course, the greatest uncertainty is capital or funding of uh, airports or you know when they run out of uh, funds or they're not able to meet the expenses so this is one of uh, the challenge that any sector or any organization any business or even a family could face running out of funds it is but obvious and, uh, and uh, yes uh, Mohammed Khalif yeah welcome so uh, I just began with the lecture and I was talking about the challenges in airport operation. Okay. Yeah. I was talking about the challenges in airport operations and I said that challenges are just reiterating for you. Challenges are but inevitable. It is just part of life and challenges are, I mean, you could face it uh, even on a personal front be it business or personal life, challenges are inevitable. So without even me going through the slides, I just wanted to set the perspective and I just want to ask you a question. What do you think are the challenges in airport operations? Um, I mean, without you know, exercising much of your mind, if you could just think of it, you see finance is an important part of life. And obviously, even in the business sector, finance is considered to be the life and blood of any organization. So capital is important. So likewise, even in the airport sector, sometimes they run out of funds, they're not able to, you know, meet the expenditure or you know, sometimes there is no proper government funding. So this is one of the major challenges. Finance is one of the major challenges. Now, apart from that, you know, things being uncertain. Suppose there is a pandemic that like what happened, you know, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And till today, the, the airport sector or the aviation sector is rebounding. It's trying to bounce back to normal. Apart from that is, again, there are various laws to be complied with and, um, you know, things have to be strategized. Operations need, be, need to be strategized. It has to be aligned with the law. The airport structure, the mechanisms have to be strategized. It has to be aligned with the law. Like yet another aspect would be, you know, uh, environmental friendly operations have to be there. So every every sector is moving towards, uh, you know, having uh, you know, having it all converted to, you know, a, a greener system or uh, making it environment friendly. Apart from that would be a, a last class. I remember we spoke about, uh, you know, problems uh, at the gates uh, uh, where the, you know, the aircrafts are, you know, are parked or when they land, they come to that particular area near the gates. So sometimes it creates congestion. So, congestion in air traffic, congestion in airports. So again, this would be yet another problem probably. Now, if you're talking about, you know, airlines, now, however, we'll confine this top, this sub, I mean, this particular chapter to airports operations, but even if just to think about airlines, what do you think could be the challenges? 
for airlines. Again, financial challenges, flight delays, because if they're not getting, a, a, you know, a kind of a signal to take off or to land, again, flight delays, Flight delays need not be always only due to not receiving enough signal. It could be any other reason, technical reason or so on. We, we discussed that as well in one of the classes. So flight delays, again, could be a reason. Then sometimes, uh, you know, convener belts, sometimes, you know, posing problems with the baggage. Then again, uh, you know, passenger waiting times and passenger or, you know, customer feedback passenger complaints, you know, dealing with different types of people, different types of passengers, you know, their perception is different. Airlines have got, you know, different kind of problems to explain to them, you know, to come out of, a, you know, a situation. So all these are kind of um, the problems or the challenges that could hit even the airlines. So as a whole, if you would see, as a whole, if, if you could see, again, apart from the other factors that we have discussed about airport operations as well as, uh, you know, uh, airlines, what do you think could be the solution for these things? Just for you to think about this. Obviously, to improve the system, government aids should be coming in. There should be proper strategization. There's proper strategies to be devised and uh, carry out research carry out customer feedback, then try to fit in your policies, uh, you know, with the aim of customer satisfaction and get yourself aligned with the law, then, you know, automation, investment in automation, investment in technology. So these could be some of the, uh, you know, the solutions that one could think of. Now, as a whole, if you see, look at the aviation industry, We've spoken about airports, we've spoken about airlines. Now, as a whole, if you look at the aviation industry as a whole, so what could be the challenges? Are you uh, clubbing it together as a whole, aviation industry or the airline industry or, you know, take the entire industry together, the aviation industry, you know. So what could be, you know, including the aircraft's problems and airlines, what could be, again, of course, would be, you know, there is sometimes this recession problems, regional recession, global recessions, and again, aligning with the laws, terrorism, um, hijacking of planes, then, um, you know, trying to meet the goals of the organization, cybersecurity, and... Uh, you know, any kind of pandemic or epidemic that hits a particular place due to which, again, network or connectivity gets distorted. If there's a particular place which is you know, hit by an epidemic or even pandemic. So sometimes they say, okay, in this particular area, like, you no know, flights are not going to fly into that particular area. So the operations are suspended for some time. Again, there will be other protocols to be followed. They are all additional time consuming protocols. So just think of the situation what happened recently with respect to pandemic. Then apart from that, again, shortage of staff. Uh, again, there can be problems with, uh, you know, problems with the staff themselves where they are dissatisfied, discontented staff, strikes, I mean, these are all common. But again, sometimes when there are problems uh, with a particular airline, for example, and the employees are discontented and there is no proper, you know, funding, for example, they have no proper funds, there is no proper government support, there is no proper funds, even if it is a privatized airline example, there's no proper business. And what happens? Naturally, the employees get affected by that. So when the employees get affected, now, in what sense? There is a possibility for, you know, redundancy, where the, you know, the airlines would start cost cutting by reducing the number of staff, by laying off 
uh, you know, according to them by laying off any staff member or members who are, you know, additional. Like they could, they would say that, okay, instead of having five supervisors, I think we could have three supervisors. Instead of having a manager and an assistant manager, we could directly have uh, the assistant manager promoted to the managerial level and cut off the manager because probably they're paying him a fat sum, a good salary. So they would say, let me promote this guy assistant to the manager level and maybe we could restructure the salaries and come to you know, a different figure. So these things have happened in many of the airlines that I know personally. And uh, there has been laying off, especially during the COVID pandemic time. I remember uh, there has been, you know, cost cutting by the airlines where, for example, you know, there was restructuring of uh, the, you know, the employees in the sense like those they felt were supposed to retire, say, for example, in a particular year, two, three years down the line, they said, okay, why don't you take an early retirement? Or some of them who were like, you know, additional staff, they said, okay, we will not be able to afford you for some time. So it happened to many airlines without me, you know, even taking the names of these airlines. But okay, well, it was in the newspapers. So, for example, Emirates Airlines did that. Okay, Emirates Airlines did that. Uh, we are just at the, just a moment, okay, I received a message. Well, um, Abdinur, uh, we are still at the introduction stage. Okay, and I'm sure you can see the screen which says challenges in airport operations. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. So, well, so where was I? So I was talking about example I was giving you was of Emirates Airlines. Now Emirates Airlines, uh, you know, uh, cut their staff and they was laying off they did cost cutting. They, they, there were many employees who were laid off. There were many employees who were asked to, you know, take an earlier retirement because if their retirement was already due for, you know, a year down the line or two years down the line, then there was Etihad Airways, that is official airways of Abu Dhabi. Even they were, you know, forced to, literally forced to go on a cost-cutting campaign by laying off certain employees. And there were many, many, many uh, people who lost their jobs. And it's the aviation sector, which was actually worst hit. Now, apart from that, of course, there were there every sector which was actually hit, business sectors. I mean, most of the businesses were hit, most of it because it was a pandemic. There were many people who lost their jobs and so on. But there was aviation sector, which was worst hit. Even there were projects that I know were, which had come to a stand still. Airports weren't running. Projects were held up because there was no flow of uh, funds, no flow of cash. So, you know, the projects were held. So... Well, so these are some of the challenges of the aviation sector. We spoke about the airports. We spoke about airlines. And of course, aircrafts. Talking about aircrafts, now, you know, low-budgeted airlines or low-budgeted aircrafts sometimes are used by low-budgeted airlines. And, I mean, that's a kind of a strategy that is used for people, uh, you know, who are not able to afford a particular type of uh, kind of airline or you know they're not able to afford the 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 costs the fare so what they do is they come up with an idea to you know promote sales and also to uh, encourage air traffic so we have even budgeted airlines where where you know probably uh, the in flight services will not be as effective or rather probably there would be no, you know, in-flight services um, to the extent of, you know, 
comfort or whatever. But um, I believe uh, even the low budgeted airlines have a way through of satisfying their customers. So it, it it is not that there is no customer satisfaction. It is just, um, you know, that low budgeted airlines are giving an opportunity to the customers or their probable customers, their prospective customers, an opportunity to fly and, you know, to increase air traffic. The only difference is that the type of uh, services that would be available in the 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 norm by the normal airlines or the by the normal aircrafts or the non budgeted uh, services which are there would not be available in the budgeting scheme. Well, now having said the perspective, now let us go through our slides. Now. As I said earlier, challenges are inevitable and are a part of every sphere of life. Challenges need not be always be limitations in the sense it's, it's, it is not that it, it is a kind of a limitation that has no resolution, but it can be just only impediments that must be overcome. Now, escalating fuel prices, inconstant airline schedules due to various other factors and so on, have always been posing as a hurdle in smooth operations of aviation industry. So in this chapter, as we said earlier and reiterating right now, we shall delve into some regular features of aviation industry that pose a challenge to their smooth operations. So the first challenge that we'll deal with here is the air traffic congestion. Now, the scarcity of airside space infrastructure have always been a matter of concern that leads to airport congestion. Like in the last class, we discussed about gate availability. You see, so availability of parking space. A proposal with regards to the appropriate and available gates to match the needs of the aircraft again haunts the airport's operation team. While they allocate space for several aircrafts that land and take off in a day. Sometimes if there is delays, there's already an aircraft that is still parked as due to take off, and there's already another uh, aircraft that lands, and that would probably require the same gate, probably because it's a jumbo aircraft. It's a Boeing 747 example. It needs huge space, and the other gates are occupied. And this aircraft that has just landed was due to you know, park itself in, you know, say, gate B example, just giving you a random example, gate B. And due to certain technical reasons, there is another aircraft that was due to take off and it is stranded there due to technical reasons. So sometimes there can be delays. So again, availability of parking space is one of the challenges. Next is theoretically speaking, a collaborative process is recommended to ease airport congestion. However, practically it does need more than collaborative pro process, which would attract multiple investments in the sector. That's what I uh, am of the opinion that would it would really play a significant role in easing congestion to a plausible extent. Theoretically speaking, yes, a collaborative process is, you know, always recommended a collaborative process between whom? Between the, you know, the airlines, the airports, the, you know, the stakeholders and the government, of course. So the, there is a need of collaborative pro process, but practically speaking, you really need more than a collaborative process, which actually would attract real time multiple investments in the sector that would really play a significant role, a pivotal role in easing congestion to a plausible extent. That means you you expand the, the airport area, you expand it, let there be more uh, allocation of lands by the government, for example. The government allocates land, there are other private investors, suppose if it it's a you know kind of um you know mixed investment there or in case it is totally privatized or just partially privatized it, it again depends so likewise so multiple investments are actually should be solicited multiple investments should be solicited and that will really play a pivotal role or a significant role in easing congestion to a plausible extent now, apart from that the second point here is allocation of funds or the availability of funds or finances now apart from the revenue that is earned apart from the income that comes into the sector Additional funding in the airport infrastructure, funding in sorry, funding in the airport structure and investment 
not, not just in the aesthetic appearance or the external factors or just not only extraneously that, you know, it looks good on the outward, but also expanding the project to allocate funds for regular upgradation expansion is always called for maintenance upgradation is always called for like technological upgradation when something is new available uh, new technologies available swiftly go for that technology for that you need regular funding you need support from the stakeholders government and all the other people who are involved in it with respect to investment next is the federal government of each country should be able to invest substantially in domestic airports as well. That is a domestic airports infrastructure as well. That will, in the sense that the central governments of any country should also be able to uh, invest substantially, not just a small percentage, but substantially in domestic airport infrastructure as well, because it it has to be, um, you know, with the 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 state government and the federal government join hands together to you know promote infrastructure in a particular place next is the fuel prices fuel prices have always been increasing it has always been a matter of concern but at times a big bank policy is better targeted towards the optimum utilization of resources available and made available resources that are already available and that has to be made available. So politically motivated and wishful thinking should be avoided in devising fuel policies vis-a-vis -vis econometrics. Now, a pragmatic approach by the government that would certainly go a long way in curbing this problem would, you know, would really be helpful. So there has to be a pragmatic approach by the government in this area. Next is green dream or, uh, you know, aligning with the, the environmental policies, the green dream or environmental protection or envir aligning of the aviation sector or the airlines or the airports with the employment uh, policies. Now, due to the environmental impact, of course, posed by the aviation sector, the said sector should also work vigorously towards a green and a healthy environment. For example, you have this Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport in India, which is considered as a 100% ecologically sustainable airport as per the recent a April 2022 report and is the first airport in India to have hybrid technology that only uses green energy. Now, yet another example uh, where the airport has really incorporated uh, you know, environmental protection aspects or, you know, the agenda of environmental protection is Cochin International Airport in India, which is right down south, which is built with a public-private partnership in India based on sustainable business model. Now, this airport has 12 megawatt solar photovoltaic plant that generates about 60,000 kilowatts of electricity per day, which is sufficient for the daily operations of the airport and makes the airport carbon neutral. That is in terms of scope two emissions. Now, it has also set up eight small hydroelectric projects under the name of its subsidiary a company called CIAL, that of course, Cochin International Airport, Limited Infrastructure Limited, CIAL, which is the abbreviated form of Cochin International Airport. Well, next is Delhi's International Airport, that is the capital of India, Dial, Delhi International Airport Limited, which has been declared to be the world's fourth best airport for the several initiatives it has taken over the years towards environment protection and is regarded as Asia's Pacific's best improved airport for the ASQ, that is the Air Service Quality by Airports Council International in the 15 to 25 million passengers category. There are different categories by this particular, um, you know, there is a particular organization which has, you know, encouraged the airports across the globe to, you know, participate in this environment campaign and to, you know, transform the airports, airlines, and, you know, to, uh, to align themselves to the environmental protection policies or with the environmental uh, environment agenda, protection agenda, even by the UN. So 
uh, Delhi International Airport has complied with it. And in the category of 15 to 25 million passengers category, so, uh, you know, this it has been uh, regarded as or granted the position of it being the best improved airport for the air service quality by Airports Council International in 1525 million uh, passengers category in the Asia Pacific. Now, energy savings through improved insulation and supply air and return air ducts, energy chillers, chilled water pipe circuits, solar water heating systems, solar light systems, and tempered cooling systems, electrically operated baggage tugs and buggies, and CNG, that is a compressed natural gas fuel station, has all contributed towards reducing harmful emissions. So these are the things that they have implemented within the airport. Next, you have India's Bangalore International Airport, again, that is part of Karnataka, another state in India. Bangalore International Airport also has gone for this green dream, and it possesses an eco-friendly, sustainable, and energy-efficient building designs. With the aim of reducing its carbon footprint, it has installed a 2 megawatt solar power plant, which also increases energy efficiency for all of which it has achieved, again, platinum status for 2022 in the APAC region, that is the Asia Pacific region. Next is in the United States, Chicago's O'Hare International Airport has a aeroponic garden so kind of a rooftop garden called O'Hare Urban Garden. And it, it also has the world's largest bee apiary with over 1 million bees. Then in Switzerland, Zurich's airport, it has got a remarkable feature in which there is this environment conservation. Uh, I mean, in the area of environment conservation, it has got this nature conservation zone that is uh, inserted between two runways. Next is in Munich Airport in Germany that has installed energy serving lighting and reinforced green landscaping. Now in China, the Beijing Capital International Airport has a minute has a green prefabricated building and has achieved silver status in a pack in the category of 50 million plus passengers. And even Hong Kong has uh, got a particular you know, status. I'm not sure you can just check up. Even Hong Kong has achieved a particular status for its contribution uh, towards the environment and incorporating environmental norms into their airport systems. So the green airports recognition run by the ACI the Asia Pacific is again an excellent initiative inspiring airports to share best practices, practice initiatives across the region and avoiding or granting them recognition, thus encouraging them to perform better. Next is the next challenge now we're going to talk about is terrorism and hijacking of planes. Terrorism is yet another challenge at this space at times, technological upgradation, improvements that help aircraft tracking and the allied have been worked upon and implemented. Again, yet another would be unforeseen challenges in the form of epidemics, pandemics, and the most recent COVID-19 pandemic tossed the aviation sector and the sector is now in the process of rising back in the economic front. Now, apart from the epidemics and pandemics, yet another factor could be accidents, air accidents. Again, this is something unforeseen, it just happens. Of course, they would have a backup plan. They have certain protocols to be complied. They know how it, it has to be handled. But again, this is kind of a challenge that the, the, you know, the airports and the airlines really face. That is, you know, air accidents or air crashes. So that's one thing, apart from, of course, terrorism, hijacking, unforeseen challenges in the form of epidemics, pandemics, accidents, air crashes, uh, you know, sometimes technological problems while in air and losing connection. And of course, you've heard of the Bermuda Triangle. Sometimes when you cross over, you know, till now they're researching why is that when a flight or plane, you know, passes through the Bermuda Triangle, you know, it goes missing. You can just find out more on that and research on that. 
Gamma's technological glitches, since airport systems are predominantly run by software in modern times, that is in today, currently, technological and software glitches can pose a major problem and impede or abstract or obfuscate the operation process. Next is recession. Global and or regional recession can be an impeding factor or an obfuscating factor or an impediment for the aviation industry, recession, global or regional. So it could be, again, an impeding factor. So do you have any questions? If not, we'll go to the next chapter. Again, it's a small chapter as well, an easy chapter. But I want you to know here that for your examination point of view, open your ears and listen to me. This is a very important topic, both the topics. Do not expect that only one question would come because normally challenges, though they are two distinct chapters, but still challenges and future of aviation industry, you could expect it to come for you as a clubbed question. There is a possibility because this is an important question. This is like we're learning about the challenges with an important aspect and what is the future so you'll have to go through different reports apart from the notes that are given to you and, you know, add on some points and then write your best for the exams if it comes for your exams. However, I would like to reiterate the chapters we are dealing with today is very, very important. I mean, I'm stressing with very, very, it's a hyperbole, but still it's important for your exams. I mean, this is. This could be there because it's an important question. Well, so the future of aviation industry, airlines and airports. In case we get disconnected, please join back. Okay, join back, please.